Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, The Bulletproof Life. My name is Ronke Odeumi and I'm delighted to have you here. If you're new to my channel, on here, I talk about money, how to build a bulletproof lifestyle, budgeting, saving, investing, becoming debt-free, you know, and just living a life that's going to take you to financial freedom. So if you haven't subscribed, please press the red button on your right to subscribe. And don't forget to press the bell so you can get notifications whenever I share a new video. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 steps to becoming more productive, how to use your planner right, how to use your to-do list in an effective manner to help you be a more productive person in 2021. So let's get right into it. The first thing you need to do is to make a to-do list daily. So right here on this planner, you will see that the planner already allows you to um, have a list on a daily basis. So you start out each day by saying, this is my to-do list for today, Monday, the 4th of January. I almost wrote 2020 there just now. So you should have a to-do list every single day that you're going to work with, the things you need to do. Now, your list, in order for it to be effective, needs to be simple. You need to have a maximum of nine actions. And the best way to approach your to-do list is to have a list of must do, should do, or could do. Now, if you can see, the reason why my planner works is that it's already giving me space to write my must do's and space to write my could do's. So my must do's are the things I absolutely need to achieve on a day to day. So I will put in my must do list by going. I don't do auto renewals. I always ensure that I research the latest numbers and get myself a better deal every year. Sometimes I take the better deal to my current car insurance and ask them to match it. So that's the first thing on my must do list. If you will notice my to do list book has a calendar on the side. So I can put in my daily appointments. So if I have an appointment at 10 a.m. with my GP, I put that in and that's something that I can have my to-do list open and I'm aware that I have to have an appointment at 10 a.m. with the GP. Additionally, I might have a client meeting at 3. It might be a meeting with George at 9. I have another one at 2 p.m. with Louise. And then at 12 p.m., I'm taking a break. So I, I fill in my calendar also the same way I fill in my to-do list. But what you need to bear in mind is that your list needs to be simple with a maximum of nine items cutting across your must-dos and your could-dos or should-dos. You can also make your list ahead. So you don't have to wait till Monday morning to make your list. You can make your list on a Sunday night. I like to make my list on a Sunday night so that on Monday morning I start off cracking and then on Monday night I make Tuesday's list and then on Tuesday night I make Wednesday's list and so on and so forth. So the second thing you need to bear in mind is to keep your list simple and then you can make your list ahead. Thirdly, start your list with a verb, an action word. So an action word gets you going. So if you see my number one thing on my must do list, I said research and renew car insurance. My number two thing on that list. So purchase is an action word. And I'm saying right there, purchase new school shoes for all. So I'm using an action word in order to get me going. So I'm not just writing new school shoes. I'm not just writing get something for all. I'm saying purchase new school shoes for all. The next thing you need to do on your to-do list is to avoid merging two actions into one. So I've already made that mistake. So the first item on my list says research and renew car insurance. That's an error. I shouldn't do that. I should say research car insurance fees and then renew my car insurance. There are two separate actions that require me to do two separate things and take up two chunks of my time. So I should correct that by going. 
So as you can see now, I have three items on my must do for Monday morning and I've split out something that I have previously merged. So don't merge your actions because it then makes it look like um, you have fewer actions when you have a lot more. Because if you are merging actions, instead of nine, you will end up having 18 or 14 actions on your must do, which is too much for the day and can get you demoralized and demotivated. The next thing is to make sure your action can be completed in one day. So don't put a project on your to-do list don't say renovate the bathroom that is not an action for your to-do list it's not appropriate it's a project and it cannot be completed in one day you can write call the builder phone number in bracket about the bathroom now that is an action you want to call the builder about renovating your bathroom. You want to have a conversation with your builder to agree some things. That is an action that you can complete in one day. It's simply a phone call. That can go into your to-do list, not renovate the bathroom. The next point I want you to bear in mind is be specific with an action. So if you see what I said in number five, I said, call the builder and then I put in his phone number. You could go as far as saying, call Alex the builder and put in the phone number. And I said about bathroom. I didn't simply just say, call the builder, full stop. Because when it's time to call the builder, you're going to have to try and remember what you're calling the builder about. You're going to have to find the builder's phone number and put it down or then call it. And all of those things discourage you from carrying out the action. But when you are specific about the action, call the builder and you've put in his phone number about the bathroom that makes the action easier for you to execute he puts the action in front of your face as something that's simple and straightforward for you to carry out your to-do list is being effective for you you can work with it you can do it quickly and tick it off the next thing you need to do is to add timing to as many actions as possible now you can see that on the left i've got a calendar that allows me to put timings to certain things. So if 9 a.m. I've got an appointment with George and I put it to 9 a.m., I need to do that. At the same time, I could put my researching car insurance at number eight. So I could put action one here. So that means I have attached timing to it. What attaching timing to actions do is it gives you a sense of urgency. It needs to be done. It needs to be done before 12. It needs to be done before 3. One of the things that works for me with this particular planner, which I sell on Amazon, is that I try to do all the things on my must-do list before 3 p.m. So this is the cutoff line for me, for my must-do list. Everything on my must-do list needs to go by 3 or 4 p.m. before I go on to my cool do list, which are actions I try to do in the evening between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m., that's my cool do list. So I could do them if I still have the energy, if I'm still in that headspace, or am I not? So most of my activities happen between 5 or 6 a.m. right on to 4 p.m. What I've done with this book is I've made it possible for you to be a morning person by starting it at 5 a.m. and for you to be an evening person by stretching it to 12 midnight. So if you're somebody who powers on at, in the evening, this book is perfect for you. The next step in being a more productive person is that you must know that what you don't do in one day, you can move over to the next day. So when you have an action and you've done it, you take it off. You take it off, you take it off. Now, if there's something you didn't do on that day, I just put an asterisk in front of it to remind me that it's not been done. And then the very next day on Tuesday, I open my book and I write that item again here. I'm going to hold up my hand and say to you that sometimes I carry over an item from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday. Now, what that does for me is that it gives me a sense of urgency. The more you carry over an item, the more you feel I really need to do this. I'm tired of writing it every day. I'm tired of putting an asterisk in front of it every day. I need to do it. I need to do it. I need to do it. So what you don't do in one day, try and move it over to the next day. Which brings me on to my next point. Don't stress out. Be flexible, be kind to yourself. If you find that you don't need the builder anymore, strike it off that list, even if you haven't completed it. You need to be flexible with your to-do list. If other events have overtaken that particular action, there's no reason for you to still insist on executing it when it's no longer needed or relevant. So go ahead and cancel it off your to-do list. Don't stress out, be flexible, be kind to yourself. One of the ways to be kind to yourself is to keep your to-do list short. I said a maximum of nine items. 
six items are more ideal. I tend to go for six to eight items on my to-do list. Some days is three if they are big action items. What you need to remember is to be flexible and kind to yourself. Now, the last point on this 10 step actions to becoming more productive is for you to celebrate small wins. This is why it's important for you to not lump two actions together. Something as simple as researching car insurance is an action which once I complete it, it's a win to be celebrated. Once I renew my car insurance, I do a small dance. That's a win to be celebrated. That's something I've, I've done well today and I'm proud of myself for. If I call a builder and I'm able to have that conversation because my builder picked his phone and I was able to have the conversation about renovating the bathroom and we agreed some things, that's an action that needs to be celebrated. You don't need to wait till every action is ticked off before you celebrate your wins. You need to allow those good happy hormones to be released every time you complete an action. And so these are the 10 steps to becoming more productive in 2021. I have intentionally made this video for January people because I'm giving you the chance to get started early. There are one or two things I didn't share earlier, which is important for you to know. And that is that you should make a 12 month goal and a six month goal and then a three month goal for 2021. So if you haven't done that, if you haven't set your goals for 2021, please get on it. Write out your goals for the whole year. Break them down into the ones you want to achieve in the first six months and then the ones you, have, you want to achieve in the next three months. Write your dreams in this little box. Let's get started. If you're wondering where you can get this planner, it's available on Amazon and it's beautifully priced and you're going to love it. Now, this is not the only planner you can use. So if you already have your own planner, that's fine. That's not a problem. Go ahead and use your own planner. But if you don't have a planner yet and you're still wondering how to go about being more productive in 2021, what planner to use, how to do your to-do list so that it's effective, so that you're achieving things on a daily, this is the planner you want to get to get your year started right. And that brings us to the end of this video. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it, which I hope you have. Don't forget to share with your friends. Invite them. Let them come and join the Bulletproof community. We have a little over 1,000 of us now, but we are growing. Together, we are going to build a Bulletproof life. Invite your friends over. Let them be a part of this community. Remember, if you are budgeting, your community is budgeting, your friends are budgeting, it's easier for you to budget because nobody will be inviting you to live outside of your means because together you are all living within your means. So it benefits you to bring your friends here to join the Bulletproof community. Until my next video, you take care of yourself and keep living that Bulletproof life. Bye-bye.